Well, praise the Lord. Good afternoon, folks. It's Friday. Praise God. It's a blessing to be with you this Friday. God saw it fit for another time uh, to share and another opportunity to try to persuade you to believe the only gospel that the Bible preaches and teaches, which is Christ and Him crucified. There is no other. There's only one way that we have access to God. There's only one way that we have access to the Spirit of God, and that is through what Christ has provided for us through His death. Amen. It's a, it's a pleasure and a great blessing to be able uh, to sit and have these uh, teachings and, and preachings uh, sessions. Uh, I take these things very seriously. The Lord has really pressed upon my heart to continue to do this and walk through these uh, verses in the book of Ephesians and study and really begin to get the meat of the gospel. Uh, where we're no longer children, amen, tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine, but growing in the grace and knowledge of the Lord, knowing what is acceptable unto the Lord, not only knowing it, but believing it, and able to walk in it, and suffer the things that's going to come our way when we begin to stand in this truth, amen, because there will be some afflictions, there's going to be some things that you're going to go through, uh, if you're truly standing for this gospel and you're truly walking upright according to the scriptures as it's written, you will suffer some things. But where God allowed those things, he also provided strength that we might endure those things. Amen. And guess what? It comes the same way. Strictly faith in what Christ did at the cross. Your endurance strength comes from the same strength and the same power of God that saved you in the beginning. You stay there, and there you are strengthened, there you are edified, there you are able to go on into the meat of the gospel and grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord. Amen. I'm excited about tonight. We're going to close out chapter uh, 2, and we're going to start... Uh, with chapter 3 in the book of Ephesians. And uh, this has really been uh, a great uh, time of learning and edification and edifying in my own heart and own life. And I just thank the Lord for the opportunity to be able to sit and be able to utter these things to you that you might know. Amen. That's, that's a blessing in itself that I'm able to sit here and speak the things that that's pleasing to the Lord that will bless and touch and, and change and, and convict and do what it's supposed to do in your heart and in your life. Amen. Not just mine. Praise God. So if you would, uh, before I get started, I just want to say this one thing. I want to broadcast one more time. Everything that goes on at Crossway Ministries was Pastor Wayne, boss and Sister Debbie. All their broadcast, Sunday morning services, the uh, Contending for the Faith on Wednesday night, uh, his Tuesday morning trumpet, everything that, they, that goes on there can be found on our YouTube uh, site, uh, Crossway Ministries, Evangelist page. Everything is up to date. Right now, you can go there. If there's anything that you might have missed or you want to go back and maybe study and uh, just uh, recap and just look at these things and, and, and write, you know, just study. Uh, they're there for that purpose, for edification and for growth and, and for all that you need. Amen. And, and we just thank you. Uh, and we just hope and pray that uh, you would uh, see it fit. Uh, to give an ear to the truth, uh, not so much as give an ear to me, but I'm asking you to give an ear to the truth, amen. Those that know the truth know who's telling the truth, amen. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice, amen, and a stranger they will not hear, praise God. So any, anyway, with that said, uh, let's uh, open up our Bibles. If you would, get your Bibles down, Uh and open up to the book of Ephesians. 
Uh, I'm going to recap some things uh, in verse, we was almost at the end of verse 17, 18, 19, and 20, 21, and 22 in verse, in, in chapter 2. So if you would go to chapter 2, go to verse 17, and I'll just start right there, just re, recap some of those things, what uh, Paul said here. He says, and came and preached peace unto you which were afar off, and to them that were nigh. Meaning, those that aren't saved, he preached the same to those that were saved. He preached the same gospel. He did not change it. What was good for the sinner was good for the saint. Amen. That's what Paul's saying here. That I preach peace unto... Uh, I. I preach peace to you which were afar off and to them that were nigh. Amen. And he says, For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. This is verse 18. Ephesians 2.18. It says, Through him, through who? Through Jesus Christ and him crucified, we have access by one spirit unto the Father. There's no other way to have access to God. There's no other way for God to work. Only one way. Paul pre preached that here. This is scripture. This is what's written. This is what holds weight. Nothing else holds weight. Man's voice, man's opinions don't hold weight at all. What holds weight is what is written according to what Christ did at the cross. And Paul said, through Christ and him crucified, we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Amen. And go on to 19. Now, therefore, you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Now, now that Paul said, now that I've come and preached peace unto you, if you believed it, now that you have access by this Spirit unto the Father, you're no more strangers or foreigners, but now you are fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, Christ and him crucified. God sends the minister out to preach it. Christ does by faith, when one begins to look at that finished work, at what Christ did at the cross, the Spirit begins to go to work. The Spirit begins to reveal truth. The Spirit begins to grow this person. The Spirit begins to do all that it desires and wills to do in that individual's life. So long as they keep faith where the Spirit can continue to work in that person's life if they do not frustrate that grace where God is working in their heart and their life. And to frustrate the grace uh, of God uh, is something that I desire not to do in my walk and in my life. Amen. And I won't if I deny self and take up the cross and follow Jesus. Let his will be done. Let my will be crucified. Amen. I must decrease. He must increase. Amen. That is how uh, that uh, needs to be in the heart of the believer. No longer I, but Christ. Amen. Who lives in me. And it says, In whom all the building fit frame fitly framed together, grows unto an holy temple. Now, here we go. Paul says, in whom? In Christ. 
in Jesus Christ. How do we enter into Jesus Christ? How do you become, in, how do you enter into Jesus? Don't you know so many of us were baptized into him. We were baptized into him at his death. When we become crucified with him, when we repented and confessed our sins and embraced his finished work, we were united together at his death. Now we are, listen, he says, in whom all the building fittingly framed together grow unto an holy temple in the Lord. Now that you are in Jesus Christ, now that you have believed what Christ done for you at the cross and you have been planted in Him and you're in uh, Christ, the Bible says you shall grow together with others that are in the same faith, grow together unto a holy temple. Well, uh, it, it don't say, uh, it says together. When, when I say together, I'm talking about Christ and you come together at Calvary. Y'all come together. It says, grow unto a holy temple in the Lord. Unto a, Growing unto, the only way that you're going to grow unto a holy temple in the Lord is to stay united in Christ. The Bible says in John, the vine, no, uh, uh, the branch cannot produce fruit unless it is attached to the vine. The true vine, Christ in Him crucified. There can be no fruit of the Spirit until one is in Christ. And when he's in Christ, the manifestation of Christ will begin to, uh, people will be able to see this in your life. No matter if it's at work, no matter if it's at the grocery store, no matter where you're at, people are going to know there is something that is different about this man than anybody that I have ever come in contact with. It's because of the Spirit that is working in you that is manifesting the life of Christ as we keep our faith anchored at the cross whereby we are growing unto a holy temple in the Lord. That's the only way it can happen. If it happens any other way, then Christ died in vain. Amen? It only happens by us staying united with Christ by keeping our faith in the finished work and not frustrating that and continuing to do that on a daily basis. I like it uh, moment by moment. That is absolutely right. Always. We say always. There's others that say moment by moment. That's not wrong, and I'm not knocking that. It's beautiful. I love it because it's right, amen? And that's what makes it so good. Praise God. It says, In whom you also are built together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. All of it's done through the Spirit. And we have access through the Spirit. We know in whom? Jesus Christ and what He did at Calvary. That is where we have access to that one spirit. Amen. That's what it tells us in Ephesians 2 and 18. Amen. So, uh, so praise God. So we're going on to chapter 3. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, Ephesians chapter 3 starting with verse 1. Listen to beautiful uh, passages of scriptures here. It says, For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ, of Jesus Christ for the Gentiles. He was a prisoner of Jesus Christ for the Gentiles. For you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you word. It was given to him for the Gentiles, but not only the Gentiles, but for whosoever will believe. Now this dispensation, I began to, this really intrigued me 
And there's a, 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 a number of different uh, definitions, but one, you know, there's a, a, a stewardship is one uh, definition for it. But I also found one where a, a dispensation means government. And, and I begin uh, to dig in and, and ask, you know, what is Paul trying to say here in verse 2? It says, you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, word. This dispensation. What was this dispensation of the grace of God? And we look at that word dispensation, it means government. It takes me over uh, to Colossians 1 and 25. Where it says, Wherefore I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Once again, I look at this word uh, dispensation and I begin and, 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 and knowing that it mean it could mean a particular time, which it was, God uh, ordained a particular time. For the Apostle Paul to have this revelation of Christ in him crucified. But what was the dispensation, the government of it? That the whole way it works, the way the system is set up. It, it took me to Isaiah 9 and 6 where the Bible says this. The Bible says, for unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. Hallelujah. The government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. There will be no end. Even though Christ has not came into the world and overthrew and, and set his uh, headquarters up yet, you can believe one thing, my friend. That day is coming. That the Lord will rule and reign this whole world. Amen. Right now, everything that God has ever done is predicated on what Christ did at the cross. All of it. Everything. God has fully invested. He sold everything out to what His Son did at the cross. He put everything in what his son did at the cross. Let me tell you something this afternoon, my friend. You need to sell everything out and begin to invest in what Christ did for you at the cross. You need to cut everything back and begin to totally invest your life, your family, everything you have in what Christ has done for you at the cross. Because only there where you truly begin to prosper in the Spirit, growing in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord. Amen? That's the only place that one can be found growing in the grace and knowledge of the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, let's keep going. Ephesians 3 and verse 3. It says, Now that... It says, how that by revelation he, Jesus Christ, made known unto me the mystery as I wrote afar in few words, whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. In the mystery of Christ. What? What was the mystery that that the mystery was Christ and Him crucified? 
as the whole counsel of God. The apostles and the prophets didn't see it to the degree until the uh, until Paul met Jesus on a Damascus road, and you can find that uh, this is when it was revealed to the apostle Paul, who was Saul at that time. You can go to Acts. And read that chapter, chapter 9, and it'll show you right there what happened to Saul on the road to Damascus. He was blinded, and, and, and the Lord said, uh, I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Amen. And, and, and Ananias would uh, uh, actually, Jesus would actually take Paul's sight from him. And Ananias would pray over him, and he would be, eventually, Paul uh, would be filled with the Spirit of God, and, and, and the Spirit of God it was manifesting Christ into his heart and his life, Christ and him crucified, and, and the revelation began to grow. The Bible says when he, when he began to eat meat, he rose up. Amen. You can read that right over there uh, in uh, chapter 9. I just love reading that. Man, when I read that, I begin to want to shout. It says when he began to eat meat. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. Uh, it's not God's will that you stay on milk your whole life. It's his will that you begin to eat meat, amen, that you become established in this faith, that you begin to rise up and, and take this gospel and be not ashamed of it and preach it no matter where you're at, no matter who you're around, that he might be known and manifested, that they might come to him, hallelujah. That's what he desires in each and every one of our lives. There's no stars in heaven. There's only one that's going to get the credit, and that is Jesus. Christ. We're here to do one thing. We're here to preach the gospel that men might know what the mystery of the gospel is. That when they read and they hear that we don't that we don't muddy it up, that we don't blur it up, that we tell them and warn them. Listen, you've been putting that off for a long time. You you you, you think that you got another day ahead, that you got time to make things right before the Lord comes. I want to tell you tonight, you don't have time, my friend. The Bible does not guarantee you tomorrow. All you have is right now, this moment. What are you going to do with the gospel, my friend? I love you enough to get on here and encourage you to take everything that you have been wrapped up in your whole life, all the excuses that you've made to continue in sin, all of the, the doubt, all of the fret and fears, and all the things that consume the mortal body come today and turn it over to the Prince of Peace, to the Counselor, hallelujah, to the Everlasting Father, to the Wonderful. He's wonderful, hallelujah. What makes Him wonderful is that He can lift the burden. And He can establish you in the right faith, whereby and grow you, Amen. That you might, that you not uh, be fearful, but that you be strengthened, Amen, by the grace of God, and be able to walk according to as it is written, not as uh, walk as others walk. The Bible says we don't walk as other Gentiles walk. We walk uh, by faith, Amen. We walk. Uh, as it, according to as it is written by faith in what Christ done for us at the cross. And we do that by simple faith, taking up what Christ has done for us and not looking back and continuing to go forward and continue to be edified and to be strengthened and to be confident in these very things that the Lord is well able to bring us uh, to more understanding and knowledge and, and, and just continue to grow us and keep us vigilant and long-suffering toward those that maybe aren't walking upright. You know, I begin to think about, uh, you know, uh, and God forbid if I've, I've been guilty of this, uh, you know, Jesus, when He chose the twelve, he knew 
He knew that Judas would betray him. He knew he was a devil. But he didn't kick him away from the table. He didn't quit breaking bread with him. He didn't quit drinking with him. He even went his life to wash his feet. He even washed his feet knowing that he was going to betray him. Why did he do this thing? I'm like, Lord, my goodness, what kind? Lord, I want that in my life. I want that in my heart. Lord, that I can wash the feet of those who would betray me. Lord, that I can be humble enough, Lord, and long-suffering and patient enough, Lord, to wait on those that maybe are not for sure, that maybe are doubting, that maybe are wavering. Lord, help me. Lord, to be able to stain my faith that I not uh, put one beneath me and, and lift myself above another. That I stay humble. And when I see what Jesus done with this man, it began to make me, it just began to humble me to the degree, well, you know, we know hypocrisy. I know hypocrisy when I see it. No doubt about it. I'm very vigilant because of the Spirit of God that dwells in me. But I'm also long-suffering and patient and willing that no man should perish and that all should come into this knowledge of the truth. Amen. And by the grace of God, I will continue to go on and continue to move on and go forward with this gospel no matter what goes on around me and not get so caught up in the things that are going on that it hinders me from being able to sit and give you the truth. Amen. And we can do that if we're not careful. We can begin to get so caught up in the things of the church, the hypocrisy, and all the wishy-washiness that we lose sight of the simplicity that is in Christ. I'm not saying that there's anybody doing that, but I'm saying we need to be careful. Amen. We do warn. If you're walking in hypocrisy, you need to repent. You need to come out and you need to let the Lord deliver you from those things. Amen. You need to repent. You need to come back to the faith. Let the Lord deal with you on those things. Amen. That people might know the knowledge of the mystery of Christ. Amen. What He did for you at the cross. It says, Which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of man, as it is now revealed unto the Holy Spirit. Apostles and prophets by the Spirit. Here we go. It didn't say it was revealed unto His holy apostles and prophets by the church, by the school, by the programs, by the sermons. It said by the Spirit. Now how do we have access to the Spirit that reveals truth to us? By access of Christ. By the death of Jesus Christ. The Spirit of God is always delivering us over to the death of Jesus. That He might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. How do we have access to the Spirit? It's through the death of Jesus Christ. If you stay anchored up at Calvary, the Spirit will continue to grow. The Spirit will will continue to reveal this truth in your heart and you won't be a child tossed to and fro. You'll begin to see what the hope of the gospel is. You'll be able by the power of God to turn from sin rather than making excuses for sin. Amen? The church has gotten so... Uh, scared of saying, well, you know, you can have complete victory over sin. Well, we don't see, we don't preach sinless perfection. They got so used to hearing to that. Well, they let me tell you something. What Christ did at the cross, there is perfection. 
There is perfection at what Christ did at the cross. Now, whether you walking in it or not, is that's between you and God. But I know that Paul walked in it. Paul had it. If Paul had it, whosoever shall believe. I'm not preaching sinless perfection. But I can tell you this. Sin don't have dominion over this vessel, my friend. I don't care what you say. I don't care what you say to your friends or your congregations. I'm telling you, according to as it is written, sin shall not have dominion over you if you will believe according to as it is written and quit believing every fad out there in the land. Quit believing every false apostle Quit believing self-made uh, evangelists. Quit being self-made uh, pastors. Man, quit giving your ears to those that are causing you to doubt what God has done through His Son at the cross. Amen? It was the greatest thing that ever happened to me in 2012. I didn't have to go to a 12-step program. I didn't have to go to celebrate recovery. I didn't have to go to a rehab. I went to Calvary, hallelujah. And there my burdens were lifted. Oh, hallelujah. I was set free. And I've been free since because of the power of God and what Christ done for me at the cross. If you want to be free, come to Calvary. I said, if you want to be free, come to Calvary. You ain't got to substitute anything. He'll, get, he'll take it, amen. And he'll toss it as far as the east from the west, amen. People are now substituting this sin for that sin, this diagnosis for that diagnosis, this for that. Well, I'm not on cigarettes anymore. I'm a vape now. Well, I don't, I don't do crystal meth anymore, but I drink like a fish on the weekends. Well, you know, I don't drink anymore, but I'm on pills now. Well, you know, all that, man, is it's misery. It's misery. But Christ the true Prince of Peace, gave His life on the cross that you might know and grow in the knowledge of the mystery of Jesus Christ. And when you know these things, there will be fruit that you know these things because they'll be established in your heart. That the Gentile should be fellow heirs and of the same body, and partakers of this promise in Christ by the Gospels. Amen. That all difference between Jews and Gentile regarding redemption had been erased. All got to come in by the same place. The Jew and the Gentile, they all had to come by the way of Calvary. I don't care if you're born a Jew or not. That don't mean you're going to heaven. You're going to have to come the same way the Gentile come, my friend. You're going to have to come by the way of the cross. You're going to have to be born again. That's what Jesus said, and that's what Paul's preaching here. It says, Wherefore I am made a minister. This is verse 7. Wherefore I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of His power. How was Paul made a minister? Here's how he was made a minister. By the gift of the grace of God. He, Paul was made a minister not because he went down to the local, uh, the, the, the famous church and got a doctrine or got a uh, piece of paper, an ordained license, Paul said, no. He said, I am made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of His power. God done it. God is the one who raises up the man to preach. 
Yeah, you can go to a Bible sermon school and be taught how to read and present a three-point message, but that don't mean God called you. God's calling those who are taking up the cross and truly entering into the sufferings of the things of God. As Paul uh, preached here, the things that he would suffer, that we would be in the same afflictions as he was. You give me a, a preacher that has never seen affliction. Man, he's never been running. He's never had to change jobs. He's never had sh doors shut in his face. He's never had contention toward him. He's never really been persecuted or pulled or, or, or had to, you know, he's never really suffered anything for the gospel. That means he hadn't really got out there with the gospel. He's been shielded. Somebody's been hiding him away from the world. And I ain't talking about being he in Christ. If you in Christ, you're going to suffer for Christ's sake. Amen. But you're going to suffer because Jesus said in John that the reason the world hates me is it's because I revealed what's in their heart. And that's what the minister of God, that's what the true preacher of righteousness, the one that preaches Christ crucified, when he begins to preach these things to the people, it begins to reveal the wickedness and the sinful heart that man has. And I know within my heart is no good thing. Not my heart. But I have a new heart. Amen. My heart's been changed. I've been born again. I have a heart that's of God now. It's not my heart anymore. Because I have put my faith where the effectual working of His power has made Christ manifested in my heart and in my life. No longer bound by the things of this world. No longer bound by sin. No longer entangled with the doctrines of devil. No longer uh, just tossed by every wind of doctrine that comes through the village. But established in the faith. Growing in this grace and knowledge. And you, my friend, let me tell you, you can have the same thing. This ain't just for me. The Bible says it's for whosoever will. Whosoever will believe that what Christ did at the cross was sufficient enough to do the work that God promised that it would do. What is that? It's going to write the laws of God on your heart. Now you're going to be held credible and to a greater degree, now that you have the Holy Spirit within you, I've, done, I've, I've spoke on this last Friday. I guess the Lord's uh, compelling me to say it again. You know, now you can look on a woman in lust and you've committed adultery in your heart. Come on now. What do you mean? Yes. Because God's looking at the heart. If you've done went so far as looking at a woman in a way you shouldn't look, you just committed adultery in your heart. Because now you have the Spirit of God to operate in. You shouldn't, uh, these things shouldn't be hard for you. These things should not be grievous to you. Not just, I, and I just use that for an example. But you know, there's, there's a lot of things out there that, that we refuse to actually uh, to walk in, but they wouldn't be grievous to us if we're found in Christ and let the Lord deal with us and get these things out of our life by staying with uh, anchored to the vine where the fruit of God can be made manifest and begin to flourish in our lives. <clears throat> I still believe that God chastises those that he loves amen that's what the bible tells us i still believe that 
But Paul said, by the effectual working of His power. Unto me. Listen to what Paul said in verse 8. This is Ephesians 3 and verse 8. He says, unto me who am least, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given that I shall preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Unsearchable riches. That means you can search and keep searching and keep searching and keep searching. You will never, ever reach the end of the riches of what was done for you at the cross. You can't exp you, you you can't dig deep enough. Amen. You can dig until you there ain't no end. Amen. I just read that and uh when I at the beginning of uh, of the teaching uh, in uh, Isaiah 9 and 6 where the Lord said a child is born. For, it says for unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulders and his name shall be called Wonderful. Counselor. The Mighty God. The Everlasting Father. The Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. There's no end in what Christ done for you at the cross. It's only beginning. Hallelujah. If you'll stay there and continue to be determined not to know anything but what Paul preached and teached, this dispensation, hallelujah, that was given to Paul, this government that was given to Paul, Christ and Him crucified, if you're determined to stay there and not let anyone distract or pull you away from those things, even yourself, I can tell you one thing, my friend. God is well able to grow you to meet every need in your life, no matter what they are. No matter what you're bound by, no matter what disease has plagued you, no matter what's going on in your heart and in your life, God has already made that way. The problem is, do you believe it? Do you believe it? Hallelujah. I'm encouraging you this afternoon to believe it. Don't waver in it. Don't doubt. Believe. He is faithful, hallelujah, to those who believe. The Bible says if you waver in these things and you doubt, think not that you receive anything from me. The Bible says that the prayers of the righteous man, the fervent prayers of a righteous man, availeth much, amen. Availeth much. That is a man who is praying that does not doubt what God has done for him at the cross. Faith in the blood of Jesus Christ and there alone where God can meet the need and he does not waver. He does not back up on these things. He's fully convinced. I want to convince you tonight. I want to convince you tonight that what Christ did for you at the cross is unsearchable. You hear me? You can search and you can find and you can see. Oh, hallelujah, man. It's just, this is just overflowing in my heart. You can keep searching. You can keep searching and you can keep searching. And you will never come to the end of what Christ done for you at the cross. Because it's eternity, eternity, and eternity. It never ends. The Bible says, oh, His government and peace. There shall be no end. Hallelujah. And I want you to know tonight that no matter what's going on in your heart and in your life, that what Christ did for you at Calvary, my friend, there's no end to the mercy. There's no end to the, the long suffering, to the, to the meekness and to the patience that the Lord has showed you through the cross. And, and, and grace reigns there for eternity. And it reigns so much that it overflows sin. Amen. That it takes out sin. And it causes you to turn unto Christ. And not turn ever again back to sin. 
I get sick and tired of the church making excuses for sin. We don't make excuses for sin over here. We tell you how to be delivered from it. Amen. By going to Calvary and laying them burdens down. Amen. Taking up the cross and following Jesus. And let God do what God does through the Gospels. Amen. For He who spared not His own Son, but delivered Him up for us all, how shall He with Him not how shall with him shall he not freely give us all things? Hallelujah. This is what the cross done. It touched everything. Nothing was left untouched. Nothing was left unsatisfied. Every, every, every need was met. Everything was fulfilled when Christ went to the cross. And there, my friend... Are you going to find the true peace of God and the government of God, the way God operates and the way His system is ordered was through the cross. Hallelujah. That's it, my friends. And there you can have complete victory. Don't let the church tell you that you have to sin. God forbid that I should sin knowing that I've been crucified with Christ. How shall I continue in sin knowing that I have been crucified with Jesus Christ? How shall I continue in those things that I know are an abomination unto God now that I have entered into Christ by faith? That would make me a hypocrite. That would make me a transgressor. God forbid I could not do these these things should not be in the child of God's life Paul said none of these things should be named among you having become saints this is written in the word amen this is not me telling you something that I think or, or that that I found on YouTube or, or the internet. This is the Word of God. Amen. God tells us that we can have victory. That we can have all things that pertain to life and godliness. If we will come to His government, which is the government which was laid upon the shoulders of Jesus Christ when He went to Calvary. And he paid for it. He purchased it all there, my friend. Everything in heaven, everything in earth, everything under the earth, all of it, hallelujah, was touched by the blood of Jesus. Everything was touched by the blood of Jesus. Nothing was left undone. If you want freedom tonight, my friends, if you want peace tonight, if you want understanding tonight, if you want wisdom tonight, if you want knowledge tonight, they're all found at Calvary. And you can go there right where you're at right now. Repent of your sins and embrace this work. So many today, I don't even hear preachers repent, preaching against sin or repentance anymore. One can't come to Christ without repentance. But it must be the Spirit once again that draws that person to repentance. And I pray to God tonight that God has touched you in your heart tonight that you've heard from the Lord and that you've called upon His name and that you've made things right and you begin to grow in this grace and knowledge and walk upright according to the Scriptures. I love you tonight. God bless you and remember everything you need was found at Calvary. It was purchased at Calvary. You can find it at Calvary if you'll just come by simple faith. Amen. The Lord loves you just the way you are, but He's not going to leave you like you are. That's why He went to Calvary to change you that you might enter in with Him and become a new creation. Amen. 
I love you. God bless you. And be sure to log on to our website, uh, crosswayministries.org. You can go to that website, crosswayministries.org, if you want to give to this ministry. Uh, you can hit the donate button. It'll walk you through how to give. You can give like that. But we really would love for you to come and be with us on Sunday morning, 10 o'clock at Crossway Ministries. Pastor Wayne Boss will be preaching this Sunday, and I know he'll be preaching what's right because he's going to be preaching the cross. Amen. And uh, we just encourage you to show up. And if you can't show up, uh, you can always uh, log on Facebook on his page, uh, Pastor Wayne Boss, uh, or you can log on at, uh, on my page. I share everything through my page. Uh, you can log on to Crossway Ministries Facebook page. You can find it there as well. But with the reason I promote this and the reason that I say these things is that you might continue to hear the truth. Amen. Because I desire that you continue to grow in this grace and knowledge and that you hear those things that are right according to as it is written. Amen. We love you. God bless you. And I'll see you next Friday. Take up the cross, deny self, and do it moment by moment, always and daily. Amen. Love you. God bless you.